QR barcode object details. The A-Label program can print a very sophisticated type of barcode that is two-dimensional. This barcode type has the name QR that stands for a quick response barcode. To create a new two-dimensional QR barcode object, click the two-dimensional barcode tool in the lower toolbar. The cursor shape will change to a 2D barcode and when you click once anywhere over the label, the program will first prompt you with a dialog box in which you should select the QR barcode choice. When you click OK, the program will create a new QR barcode object whose upper left corner is where you originally clicked the mouse. A QR barcode object does not display any corresponding text because the whole idea of a QR barcode is to be able to encode hundreds if not over a thousand characters in a relatively small space. The default QR barcode object is colored black and appears to consist of many jagged little random blocks in its interior. QR barcodes can be immediately recognized because three corners of each QR object appear identical as special square box patterns. These corners are the upper left, lower left, and upper right corners. Note that the lower right corner does not contain this distinct pattern. About the only thing you can do with a QR barcode is to right click it to bring up the properties dialog box. The QR barcode has only a few basic properties that you can change. The main property is the text of the barcode shown here in a large white area where you can type and or edit the text. This area is called a memo field and you can click either of two buttons to load or save your memo text in an ASCII text file. The second basic property that depends on the type of text you enter is called the data type. There are only three data types with the names numeric, alphanumeric, and byte. Numeric data can only consist of the digits 0 to 9. No other characters are allowed. The alphanumeric type adds only uppercase A to Z letters and just a very few other special characters such as the space character, the percent sign, the period, the forward slash, and the colon. Alphanumeric characters also include the plus and minus symbols and the asterisk symbol. Byte data can include lowercase a to z as well as any other standard character that can be represented in 8 bits. Thus the byte data type is the most robust. You will usually want to select the smallest data type that will accommodate your data because the smallest data type will in general make the smallest QR code symbol. If you use the load button to load a data file, the program will automatically select the best data type for you. The third and last user selected option is called the error correction level. QR barcodes are self-correcting in the sense that the barcode label may be ripped or torn or smeared and yet a barcode reader may still be able to correctly read the barcode even though parts of it are somehow damaged. The amount of error correction is determined by the error correction level that must be one of the selections named low, medium, quality, and high. The low level provides for about 7% corrections. The medium level provides for about 15% corrections. The quality level provides for about 25% corrections. And the high level provides for about 30% corrections. The higher the error correction level you choose, however, requires making a larger symbol. Because a QR barcode can hold more than just a simple string of characters, the A-Label program expects all the characters to be in a text file. Thus, a QR barcode is specified by including a file name file path 
to the file that actually holds the data. Any such file must be a simple ASCII text file. When a QR barcode is loaded, the large middle white block of text in the above dialog box will contain the actual text that gets encoded. As another example, we are now going to load an items template that only contains one item that is a two-dimensional QR barcode. This is a QR barcode that contains the first 330 characters in the Constitution of the United States of America, otherwise known as the preamble to the Constitution. When we right-click this barcode to bring up the Properties dialog box, we can see the words to the preamble. The program has automatically loaded the text file into the memo control in the dialog box. You might also notice that the dialog box has some text that is colored blue. The number 330 is the number of characters the program found in the text file that was loaded. You will also see the words good encoding in blue. This just means the program had no trouble finding and reading and encoding the text file. There are two other lines of blue text in the upper part of this dialog. The first line gives what is called the version number of the QR code. Version numbers range from 1 to 40 and determine the size of the QR code symbol. You cannot directly set the version number, but you can at least see the version number the program has determined for you. The other line of blue text is a number that is in the range from 0 to 7 and this number is called the data mask number. This is another value internal to the program that we won't explain because its technical details are beyond the scope of this help topic. Most of the remaining properties should already be familiar because they are the same as you will find for other label objects. QR barcodes can be rotated at either 0 or 90 or 180 or 270 degrees. The barcode color can be changed, although the default is black, which is standard for all barcodes. The barcode block can be given a centering option, or the position of the upper left corner can be determined by the two edge distances. A QR barcode can also be given the non-printable property, although that would be rare. As with any other object, we can click it to select it. The four small white handlebars mean the object is selected. However, since these handlebars are not solid black, they also mean you cannot resize this object using handlebars, although you can drag it to reposition it anywhere on the label. When you save an items template with a QR barcode object, the program does not save the text of the barcode. The text of the barcode is always contained in another text file. There is an option related to that text file that must be set correctly to enable the program to find that file. That option is called the starting search path option. The starting search path can be either a fixed path or it can be the template path for the currently loaded items template file. Usually we, we recommend you set the option for the template path. When you do this, you need to make sure the file name is the name of the desired text file that is contained in the same directory as the items template file. Otherwise, if you choose the option for a fixed path, then you must enter that fixed path as the correct string in the edit box for the file search starting fixed path. The file search starting path string is ignored when the option is chosen as the template path. No matter which starting search path option you set, the program starts looking in the specified directory for a text file that has the name as specified in the edit box for the file name. The search is recursive, which means the search will continue looking in all subdirectories under the directory where the search starts. Thus, when you later reopen the items template, the program will look for the corresponding text file. 
If that file is deleted or moved, then the program won't be able to encode or create the barcode. Thus, you need to ensure that the file name is spelled correctly and that the starting search path option has been appropriately chosen. If the program can't find any text file with a matching file name, it will display an error message and on the label it will show an object with the message file not found. If you click this file not found object and select its properties, you should see the words bad encoding and no text in the memo box that normally shows the contents or data. This means, of course, that the associated data file could not be found. If you set the correct file name and path options, then this error will go away. To resize a QR barcode, you can set the X width property to a larger or smaller value. The default value of 0.03 represents 3 hundredths of an inch. Another way of resizing is to right click the object and select the menu item to resize and reshape and use the slider control to change the size. This slider control provides an alternative to directly editing the X width value. This concludes our discussion of the basics for the QR barcode object.